we're going to learn how to make a cymbidium orchid. So to begin with, we're going to start with this rot and we're going to need uh, some white gum paste and I'm just going to tear a little bit and I just need about on my measuring cup here I'd say the third to yeah the third to the uh, the largest about the size of a hazelnut so I'm gonna form that that into a ball and then into a long teardrop shape such as this one it's kind of like a carrot shape almost all right and then on the underbelly of it I'll take my Dresden tool which is a tool that I always use this is the one that was shaped like a foot and I'm gonna press that on the underbelly of my of my throat I'm gonna take a gauge 26 floral wire about I would say about two to two and a half inches in length and form a hook on the uh, one tip whoops there we go and brush that tip with a little bit of my gum glue of course the gum glue's recipe is um, there's a tab on this website that says recipes and you will find all the recipes that we used here how to make gum paste from scratch and um, um, the, the gum glue and all that beautiful things if you if your um, wire phrase like this just cut off all the excess in there okay make sure that it's nice and and moist I, I want my my floral wire to be moist but not excessively wet because otherwise it will just eat through my gum paste and it will not stick it will just slide all over the place so I'm gonna take that and basically put that into the narrow point of my of my uh, throat and I'm gonna pinch it so that it doesn't come off when the gum paste is dry I have to say about a quarter of an inch that would be the the tip of the uh, the, the uh, wire that I have I'm just reshaping it again again so the underbelly I'll take my tool and press that down and then on both sides of my of my throat I will pinch it just a tiny bit and point it downwards like so all right I'm using the the wider the wider foot on my tool and just pinch it down okay and then I'll take some more of my white gum paste just a tiny tiny bit on my measuring cup I would say this would be the third to the smallest would be the size of it so I would roll that gum paste on the palm of my hand using my forefinger and flatten it a slight bit so flatten it a little bit and then I'll take my um, throat brush a little bit of gum glue on the very tip just a little bit you just want it tacky but you don't want it too wet and I'll put my my gum paste right there right on the very tip and with my needle tool I would 
press a line right at the very at the very center of it. So here. All right. So at this point, you'd want it to curl it a little bit actually. My wire is actually fraying, but you can always wrap this with a little, with another um, strip of floral tape so it doesn't fray. So this is the shape of the uh, of the uh, throat, the very first part of this medium orchid. Okay, so I'm gonna try this for about 24 to 48 hours until it's nice and dry. So here I have one that's already been dry for 24 hours. You want it dry so that when you, you when you um, put the throat part of this medium orchid, it's not going to bend some more or probably get uh, take off or, or slip off the wire. So you want to make sure that this is nice and dry before you use it or add anything to it. Okay, so if you are using the Petal Crafts, um, Petal Crafts, uh, set of some medium orchids, you'll receive um, three petal cutters and a uh, silicone veiner. So for this, you're going to use, of course, the uh, the throat cutter, which is like this shape. And I'm going to just use white gum paste again. And um, no matter what color of some medium you're using, or you're going to make pink, burgundy, um, green or whatever, the throat is always white. So you can actually pre-make the throat way ahead of time before you even do the petals. Because you know that no matter what color you're going to do, you're still going to make white throats. So I'm just going to, this is just an even thinness, about a sixteenth of an inch. And you don't need to um, to press this with any kind of veining tool, it doesn't really, you don't really need that. So I'm just going to press it down and shake it a little bit so I get that clean cut, as you can see. And I'm going to take my, my pedal pad, my foam pedal pad, make sure that you use the one that's kind of, it gives, it's sturdy, but it does, it's not too soft that it might tear your gum paste. I'm going to take my ball tool and basically just um, thin the first the first part, this uh, very wide scallop right here, up to the end of the first small scallop. So I'm just going to thin that with my ball tool. Make sure that it's nice and thin. And then for the rest of the of the uh, throat, which is this is actually the one that's shaped like a lip. I would take my needle tool and um, I'm just going to lift this up. I would normally do this on the side of the table so that I can um, have my hand uh, free and it will not be restricted by the table. But I will just um, lift this up a little bit and I would take my, my throat to the very edge of my foam pad and with my needle tool at a 45 degree angle, you don't want to do it like this because this will tear your um, your gum paste. You wanted it to be just 45 degrees and you wanted to use the side of your needle tool, not the tip. Okay? So I'll just go back and forth, move on to the next part, go back and forth, next part and back and forth. And you don't really want this to be too curly. This should not be as curly as the Cattleya. It has a little bit of movement to it, um, a little bit of flounce, but not as dramatic as a Cattleya throat would be. And as you can see, I just do, I just rock my needle tool one, two, and move on to the gum paste right beside it. I don't do the whole scalp in just one twirl of my needle tool. That's not how I'm doing it. So I would, I would do this on the side of my table, of the sa of the table, so that your hand is not restricted um, in movement. 
And as you can see, I'm using the side of my needle tool, not the tip. So after I'm done um, flouncing my, or creating a movement for the throat of this medium, I'm just going to go ahead and make it wider a little bit. I'm just trying to thin out the... the edge. So after I'm done doing that, I'm going to take a little bit of um, yellow gum paste. This is like bright yellow. And I'm just going to use a tiny yellow gum paste. I'm going to smash it in my cup so you have an idea. About fourth, fourth to the smallest would be. Or you can always just guesstimate this. And I'm just going to make like a tongue for my um, for my throat. So I'm just going to roll this on the palm of my hand kind of like a snake. And if you do this you see both ends are actually pointy. And this is about about one and three quarter of an inch. Let's see here. So one and three quarters of an inch would be the length of my of my throat. And I would take my needle tool and uh, um, put it right through the center and bend it downwards. So you will have that kind of like a a tweezer almost or a clothespin uh, shape and I would take that and put a little bit of my gum glue on the underside all right And I put that right on my throat. Okay. I would leave a little bit of space right here because I wanted this to be right on the very tip of my of the first part of the um, the, the the throat that we did earlier. So after I've put that, I'm going to spread a little bit of gum glue right on the side of the throat, like so. And just wipe off the excess. And I would take that and place that in between my forefinger and my thumb. And then with my, um, the first part of the, of the throat that we did earlier facing down, I would just have the tip of this and the tip of the throat like meet and stick that right on to the side. And you don't really need to, to close it. As you can see, you can still see the, uh, the back of the first part of the throat that we did earlier. And just close it. And if you put enough glue to it, it should stick right away. It doesn't like slip as you see. So that is the first part of the uh, some medium throat. So you just let us dry for another 24 to 48 hours until, until it's nice and dry before we start painting it. I'm going to take a piece of uh, my scratch paper I'm going to use some aubergine um, petal dust. If you have the uh, the palette petal dust that we normally use because it's a lot less messy than this one, you can also use the uh, um, a combination of the black and um, African violet that you have there. So I'm going to use aubergine and color that 
top part of my medium with that color just a tiny bit so I'm gonna try and dust all over the top part or the the underbelly up to where that um, uh, tip the circle that we did earlier I'm just gonna try and not dust it so you can dust the top part and a little bit of the side as you can see I, I just have a little bit of of dusting in there not a whole lot and then on the inside you can use buttercup yellow or the yellow shade on your palette petal dust and I'm just gonna color I'm just gonna dust the you know where the yellow part is all the way to the back or the underbelly of my throat I'll try try not to get that part that that um, uh, round part of the throat remains white hopefully or what you can do if you um, have larger brush and you cannot avoid um, dusting that part you can actually put that um, white uh, round at the very last moment so that you, you can make sure that it remains white so I'm just dusting the underbelly of the of this medium and also the middle part of the throat with a buttercup yellow okay So after you're done with that, we're going to try and um, do the, uh, the details of the throat. And this is actually the most dramatic part of the flower. So I'm going to just use uh, uh, my burgundy gel paste. And I've already mixed this with a little bit of vodka. And I'm going to take my 5-0. This is my 5-0 detail brush. You can use three zeros as well whichever you prefer and I'm gonna start I'm not gonna put anything on the very first scallop of the uh, throat I'm gonna start on the second one so I'm just gonna drag that from as you can see I'm just dragging it from the side of the throat going in And really, um, you have to look at a medium to see, because there are other mediums that doesn't really have much dots to it or um, color to it, just a few. So you can just take a look at it and kind of st study the pattern of the flower. And um, you can also use red gel paste. I just find that um, it's too bright for me to use and again I'm just dragging the brush from the side going in going to the center of the of the throat like so You don't want your brush to be too, too, too wet, too, too soaked with a. Uh, you don't want it to be too soaked with um, with the gel paste or the vodka, because you want it to have that line details to it as well. As you can see, there's really not a lot of skill that's required to this. You're just basically dragging that brush inwards. And that's all I'm doing.
Okay. Just want to make sure that it's nice and it's kind of difficult to paint when you're when you have to have it like in front of a camera I really can't see. So you kind of understand. But you have an idea exactly what it's how it's done, right? Okay, so after that, actually there's a line that goes right from the middle going up. And it usually is like a large dash. Just like so. Mm -hmm. And then like random dots. And the dots doesn't really need to be like perfect circles. There are some that are bigger than the others, so I'm just gonna like very, very random as you can see. It goes all the way to the inside of the the throat. So it's, it's entirely up to you how much dots you want it to put in there. If you want a few, if you want a whole lot, it's entirely up to you, really. So at this time I would stop and we'll go and, and do the, uh, the, pet the petal and the sepal part of the flower. Okay, so for the petals and the sepals, and here I'll, I'll show you the cutters, the two cutters that um, I'm using. This is actually the sepal, the one that has a notch. You will make three of these per flower and two of the petal. The petal does not have a notch. And there are actually different in shapes, as you can see. So I wanted to make like a deep brownish, purplish, not purplish, but burgundy color of some medium that I wanted to do. So I'm going to start with a pink um, gum paste flower. And I'm going to roll this so that one side of my um, gum paste is thicker than the rest and that way I have a space to insert my wire, my stem wire later, later on. And um, I'm going to take the, uh, the veiner that comes in the set and press it down. And as you can see I'm actually making sure that the tip of my veiner is um, on the thicker part of my gun paste so that when I cut it I know for sure that I have that space for my wire. So just press it down and shake it a little bit so that you get a clean cut on your gun paste. And as you can see that is wide enough to accommodate my wire as compared to that side. So I'm going to take my floral wire, this is a number 26, 26 gauge floral wire and I'm using it, I'm cutting like about two and a half inches um, of length and I'm going to brush that a little bit of my gum, with a little bit of my gum glue and as you can see I'm wiping off the excess, that way it's damp but it's not too wet and I'll take my petal, put it upside down um, and with my forefinger and thumb, I'll pinch it so that I can tell where my wire is going. And I'm going to just put it all the way to about a quarter of an inch just in. If you wanted to make it longer, sometimes when you dry it and the petal is like curled, it will uh, come out. So you want to make sure that there's really, you don't really put it way too in to the gum paste. So with my foam pad, I'm going to take my ball tool and basically just thin out that edge. Also when you insert your wire don't forget to pinch it that way the wire doesn't come off when the, uh, the gum paste is dry. So I'm just going to use my ball tool and basically take that and make sure that it's nice and thin. All right. Up here. 
So with your needle tool, just drag that from the tip all the way to the bottom and uh, fold that petal in a little bit. Take your drying rack right here and dry it. There's a hole there that you can insert your your wire in and then you just dry it in place such, like so. Okay, so both you're, you need to make two of these per petal or per flower, so you're going to dry it the same way. So for the sepal, you're basically going to start again with the same um, amount of gum paste in the same shade as the one that you previously used. And I am rolling it the same way as I did before where one side of my gum paste is um, thicker than the rest. If you have the cell board, you can also use the cell board. The only thing is that I don't really like that um, notch that runs through the back side of my, of my um, flower. I'm going to need to press my veiner first. So when you have a one part veiner such as this, you press it, you press the veiner first before you cut it. If you have a two part veiner, then you have to you have to cut your petal first and vein it. So I'm, I'm just going to press it down and then give it a little bit of shake. So I get a really nice clean cut as you can see. Get my number 26 floral wire and cut about two and a half inches. You don't need to you don't need to form a hook on the center. If you want to you can of course but I wouldn't even bother because this this petal is not really that long that it will not twirl. Just don't forget to pinch it after you've inserted your wire. So pinch that. Make sure it's nice and pointy, not square. Again, I'll thin the edges just like before. Okay, make sure that everything's like nice and thin out. And then I will take my needle tool and I will start on the foam. Don't start right here on the gum paste because you will tear that, that notch. So start on the foam and drag that needle tool, the side of the needle tool, all the way down. Fold it in half. And the top part of the medium is actually bent forward. It's, instead of bent backward, it's bent forward like this. So I would take my foam dryer and dry my petal like so. To how it's supposed to be shaped like. So it's bending bending forward. So for each flower that you use, you're gonna um, you're gonna use one of the sepal dried this way. The rest of the sepal will be dried just like the petal where it's bent backwards. So I'm just gonna show you here real quick. So again I'm just gonna roll my gum paste. Like so, vein it. Make sure that the tip of your veiner is um, right where that thick part is. Upside down, pinch, and thin. All right. Okay. So with your needle tool again, just drag that needle tool right down the center. 
fold it in half. And so this one, I would dry it in the same dryer. first part. Okay, so it's dried backwards, as you can see. So it's dried backwards, and two of these will be dried backward, two of these will be dried backward, and one will be dried forward, just like I did, I, I showed you earlier. There's a piece of um, scratch paper, and after your petal has dried, I'm going to use um, Sahara. This is Sahara Petal Dust. If you have the uh, pellet petal dust, I'm, you can use the tomato or any of the reddish, um, red-brown, um, I would say, uh, uh, shade. So I would just dust the whole thing with this shade all the way to the tip. I'm going to leave like the tip of it to where it's still a little bit pinkish. That way I leave that shade there. Again, I'm using a Sahara petal dust. I actually enjoy using the petal petal dust because it's not as dusty as this one. But this is what I have open, so. And I'm also using a shade of um, raspberry. So I get that reddish shade as well. And every time I heavily dust my gum paste like this, I actually like to shimmer it a little bit with um, pearl dust. That way it's not, it doesn't look too dry. And this is actually a substitute that I do instead of steaming the flour or the gum paste. It's just one additional step that I skip, especially if you have a lot of uh, petals that you need to do that's one more thing that you can save your time from so here I have all my components I have this is the um, the sepal that I used that I dried um, curved going in and these are the two that I did that is bent backwards so as you can see the difference in in their shape so this one is the backwards one, and this one is the one that's shaped, uh, that's shaped forward. Okay. So just a tiny little shimmer. I'm not even sure if you're actually seeing that on camera, but I'm just shimmering a tiny bit of petal dust or pearl dust on it. So it's nice and, and shimmery. It looks dewy, which is, you know, how orchids are anyway. Okay, so for the assembly, I have, you know, three of the sepals, the one that has a notch on the uh, center. I have the one that's dried backwards and the one that's leaning forward. And then my two petals that doesn't have a notch. You see how the difference is on the tip. This one's more rounded and this one has that tip. And so I'll take that that center that we've completed earlier and the, for all um, the, the orchids the petals actually goes first so I would take my forefinger and my thumb and bend my my um, wire uh, backwards to about 90 degrees don't do this because you have a tendency of breaking your petal and you know it's not a good thing. So I'll take my half width um, floral wire and I just use this contraption. This is actually a, a ribbon shredder. You can find this on Petal Crafts as well. This is manufactured by a company in South Africa. 
and um, so I'm going to take that and one of my petals. So this will be positioned on a two o'clock um, position from the center. So I'm going to take the one side of my floral tape and um, secure that with my forefinger. So I, I have it tucked underneath my forefinger and I'm just going to um, wrap that around the wire at about a 45 degree angle. You have to angle your your uh, floral tape that way you actually move instead of having it straight where you just keep wrapping that wire without moving and then you end up with a really thick stem. As you can see I wrapped it all the way to where I couldn't see the the wire anymore and that's how you wanted it to wire. You, you don't want to the wire to be like seen when you're wrapping the uh, the, the stem and if you can see it just like this one where you can still see a little bit you can actually tuck that in to where everything's like hidden take the other petal like that and put it right um, beside the uh, first petal that I put on and then wrap it twice with my floral tape, my half width floral tape and I use half width because again I don't want my stem to be too uh, too thick because otherwise it will make a really large hole on your cake. Okay, so this one, the one that the one that's bent inwards, will go on top of the flower, right there on the center, like at the twelve o'clock position. So again, I'm going to wrap it twice. That way, I can let go of that petal, and I know for sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so it will be positioned on the 12 o'clock um, position, and then I'm going to wrap my my half with floral tape twice so it's nice and secure. I know that I can let go of it, and um, it will not move. It will not go anywhere. So this is what we have so far. And if, it, if, it, if your petals move, that's fine, because it's actually it has a tendency to move. Um, until all of the uh, the rest of the wire is wrapped. So these are the next two sepals that I have, the ones that are bent backwards. And I'm just going to position that on the 7 o'clock and the 4 o'clock position. So 1, 2, And this one, like I said, you have to move, move your, bend your uh, wires backward or to a 90 degrees position. And so after you've wrapped the, the center of your, of your uh, orchid, then you can pull that um, floral tape and start wrapping it. Again, as you can see, I have it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, instead of straight like this. Because if you have your floral tape straight like this, your tendency is to wrap that part of the wire more than once. And you don't want to waste a lot of floral tape. So I'm just going to cut that part and just wrap it all the way to the end. So just rearrange your petals so it's nice and, and evenly spaced. And that is your finished some medium.